Hello everyone and welcome to In the Cosmos from the De Anza College Planetarium for June 24th, 2020. My name is Toshi Komatsu, your host and the director of the Planetarium. This episode is your preview of the July night sky. We'll be looking at constellations, planets, and a possible meteor shower, so let's go. Here we are looking at the western sky in mid-July at about 9.30 p.m. local daylight time. At the beginning of the month, the sky will match a little bit later than 9.30, and at the end of the month, this sky will match a little earlier. By this time, mighty Leo is uh, diving uh, down towards the western horizon to go to sleep for the uh, season. Look for his distinctive uh, hook-shaped mane low to the horizon there. Now, if you look a little bit higher and to the north, uh, we can find a very familiar shape that's in the sky here. Uh, we're going to be looking uh, here to find, uh, let me back up just a little bit here, famous shape here in the sky uh, that's known as the Big Dipper and also known as the Great Bear, Ursa Major. Um, but these seven stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, form the stars of the Big Dipper. And from there, what you can do is you can follow the arc of the handle of the Big Dipper and you can follow that arc to Arcturus, which is in the constellation of Bootes, the herdsman. And if you're continuing to follow that line, again, arc to Arcturus, and then you can spike down to Spica, which is in Virgo, the maiden there. So backing up just a little bit more so that we can see all of those constellations. We've got Ursa Major, the Great Bear. We've got uh, Bootes, again, the herdsman there. And we've got Virgo, the maiden there. So three constellations that can help find uh, each other there in the sky. Now looking at the sky, let me zoom in a little bit more again here. Looking at the sky at these constellations, in particular at these stars, they're pretty easy to find uh, because looking along these paths here uh, from uh, the arc, uh, Arcturus is the only bright star sort of along that pathway and Spica is the only star along that pathway there. So they're pretty easy to find in the sky. I hope you can find them in the real sky. Now, if you have a clear view to the south, uh, you can find a couple of my favorite constellations, especially for this time of year as we head into the summertime here. We're looking towards the south to find uh, there's a star that you can see there coming into view called Antares. And that is, the or that is a star that's in the constellation of Scorpius, the scorpion here. And not too far away, just to the, uh, just to the east, is Sagittarius the Archer. Uh, now, Scorpius has this really bright red star uh, at the uh, heart of the constellation, and that's called Antares. Uh, and that is what astronomers call a red supergiant star there. And uh, it's, again, sort of the heart of the scorpion, the thing that I look for first. But I also like to look for these uh, three stars that are just to the uh, to the side, to the right of Antares. These three stars here, they form the claws of the uh, scorpion. And then you've got uh, Antares. And then, again, you follow the curve of the stars here, and you get a nice hook there for the hook tail of Scorpion the Scorpion. Now again, looking a little bit off to the uh, to the left, more towards the east, there's another constellation famous for the summertime, and that is in the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer. Now the thing that people like to look for usually when they're looking for Sagittarius is this teapot shape that I'm circling here in the view. There's the body of the teapot right here, and then you've got the handle, uh, along this side over on the left and then you've got the spout over on the right and then you have the lid up here with this triangle up here. So this half man, half horse is a centaur who again is an archer so he's got his uh, bow and arrow uh, pointed uh, at Scorpius ready to strike just uh, in case Scorpius has the idea to harm anybody there. So finally uh, looking in the east 
uh, one more set of constellations that I like to turn your attention to uh, towards, and that's uh, looking a little bit higher in the east. Uh, there's a star that you can see in your view here, Altair. Let me move the sky a little bit higher up here. You can see that there are three stars here. There's Vega, there's Deneb, and there's Altair. And those three stars form up a triangle known as the Great Summer Triangle. And those three stars uh, form the corners of this triangle, which passes directly overhead during the summer nights. Now, Vega is a part of the constellation, which is known as Lyra the Harp. And there's a very nice parallelogram of stars, almost a perfect parallelogram, uh, just off of that star Vega. And then there's Denim, which is part of the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. That's mostly known for the sort of the uh, cross shape that you can see there. Sometimes what we refer to as Cygnus is sometimes referred to as the Northern Cross. And then there's Altair, which is in the constellation of Aquila the Eagle. And uh, the, the, most of the stars in Altair are a little bit tricky to find. They're a bit further away and not terribly bright. So usually I look for Altair and then I look for these two stars on either side of Altair to know that I found the right star there. Now all three of those constellations there uh, form uh, the constellations of, again, you've got Lyra the Harp uh, here, and then you've got Cygnus the Swan and Aquila the Eagle, three very famous summertime constellations to be on the lookout for. Now as long as we're looking at the sky here, uh, towards the east, we're going to head back down uh, towards the horizon and make our way towards the south where there are a couple of bright planets in the sky. They'll be the brightest thing uh, in that part of the sky and they'll also be the uh, right next to each other so that'll make them a little bit easier to spot. I'm talking of course of these two bright things right over here. There's one here and there's one here. Those are going to be planets and we've got the planet Jupiter and Saturn right next to each other. Again, this is 9.30 mid-July and they're rising just after the sun is set. In fact, on the 14th, Jupiter is going to be at what we call opposition. And that's when the planet is directly opposite the sun in the sky as seen from Earth. And uh, that means that Jupiter is going to be visible all night long and will rise just as the sun sets. Now, Saturn here will do the same thing. It'll reach opposition on the 20th. Now, if we change our date here and we head back to uh, July 5th, uh, you'll get to see an interesting pairing with those two planets there. I'm going to go ahead and run time forward here just a little bit more as well. We're going to skip ahead to about 1030 now. And you can see that on, the, uh, on this date, you've got the moon rising right along with uh, Jupiter and Saturn there. So that'll make for a very pretty pairing. Uh, the moon's going to be rather close to Saturn, might wash out Saturn and Jupiter a little bit because it'll be nearly full. It'll be just a day past full moon there, but uh, might be good for uh, taking a nice photo of the sky if you've got the moon and a couple of planets right next, uh, right next door to it. Now the other planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, they're all morning planets at the moment, but by month's end, uh, Mars will rise about 11.30 p.m. Finally, the 29th is the peak for the Southern Delta Aquarid Meteor Shower. The shower is actually active from the 12th through August 23rd, but the best night for catching them will be on the 29th. Under ideal, absolute dark sky conditions, you might see up to 25 meteors per hour. In practice, though, um, you're going to see a lot less than that because uh, you'll have light pollution and your own sky conditions. Here, I've exaggerated the rate of meteors that you're seeing here. Now, following the trails back of the meteors, you'll know that they're a part of this particular, uh, cons or this particular meteor shower because they'll all seem to originate in the constellation of Aquarius, uh, the water bearer there. And they will seem to come from a point uh, directly at the center, marked here by the uh, probably small label that you can see here, the Southern Delta Aquarians. Um, that is where the uh, trails, if you follow them back, they'll seem to all come from this point here. But meteors can actually appear from any direction. So the best advice if you want to catch them is to lay out, get comfy, stay warm, and just look up. The best time to look will be after 1 a.m. on the morning of the 30th. That's the night of the 29th, the morning of the 30th when the moon will be just setting and you want to get to as dark a location as you can manage. And who knows, you might get lucky. It'll be good practice for the Perseids coming up 
in August. Well, that's it for this edition of In the Cosmos. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned a little something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video here. You can find more about the planetarium on our website and more astronomical goodness on all of our social media. We're available on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can check out those links in the description. For now, thank you for checking in. Here's wishing you clear dark skies, and this is the De Anza College Planetarium signing off.